Hi, my name is uh, Casey. I go by Casey. And I'm from Princeton University, advised by Professor Kyle Jamieson. And today I will be presenting my work on MM wall, a transflective metamaterial surface for millimeter wave networks. So as bandwidth requirement of wireless applications grow, people have turned their attention to next generation 5G, which started to utilize a millimeter wave technology. Millimeter wave generally refer to 24 to 100 gigahertz, a frequency range that offers a huge amount of bandwidth compared to a low band signal used for current 4G LTE. Due to abundant spectrum available at millimeter wave, a 5G download speed can reach 10 gigabits per second. That's up to 100 times faster than 4G. And this high data rate allows a non-disruptive video streaming experience. 4K VR and AR, and services for outdoor crowded areas. However, there are fundamental challenges of millimeter wave as high frequency signals cannot diffract around obstacles. For example, assume that the millimeter wave link has been established between the base station and the user. As the mobile user enters the building and signal tries to penetrate through the wall, it experiences a huge transmission loss of around 20 to 30 dB, resulting in a complete signal outage. Also, whenever someone walks across the established link, the link is completely blocked by human body or even a tall building's outdoor, causing glitches in communication. And this is why if you actually use 5G in your smartphone, you're experiencing a frequent 5G to 4G fallback. And problem gets even worse when you first establish the link. Since millimeter wave signal attenuates very quickly with distance, it requires highly directional antenna to focus their power on the receiver. But because the beam is very narrow, communication is possible only when the transmitters and receivers beams are perfectly aligned. But aligning this beam incurs a huge overhead that scales with user mobility. So we propose a smart surface MMO to install on the window so that we can relay the millimeter wave signal from outdoor base station to indoor and steer the beam towards the direction of the user whenever the user is moving. Also, when the link between the indoor AP and the user is blocked by human body, AP instead shoots the signal to MMO, which then steers the incoming beam towards the direction of the user. Likewise, when the outdoor 5G service is occluded by tall buildings, MMO forwards the traffic to overcome the blockages in outdoor. And we really want to emphasize that a single MMO can achieve all three tasks at a single location. Last but not least, MMO can split the incoming beam into multiple beams and simultaneously steer them to search for the user much more quickly than the single beam. So we want to summarize that MMO offers a seven key capabilities. So first, it operates at millimeter wave frequency and is electronically steerable through the surface to bring outdoor signals indoor and also reflects the signal on the both side of the surface for indoor or outdoor applications. Also, it consumes order of microwatt power, able to split the incoming beam and able to steer the beam with a resolution lower than 0.5 degrees. And such capabilities were something that previous work could not achieve. In particular, recent works have deployed something called MetaSurface to relay the signal against blockage, but branches of these works were either operating at much lower frequency where the uh, blockage it wasn't so much an issue or it's not steerable, so it wasn't practical for mobile users. So this is uh, our high-level system overview. And there is a base station outside the building. And there is a receiver or user inside the building that gets the data from the base station. And we have installed the MMO in the middle of the window. And assume that link is already established between base station and user. And the human body happened to block the signal. And now the UE cannot get any data. And then what happened is that base station would steer its transmit beam towards the MMO which would basically excite the MM wall. And once we apply a proper voltage to the MM wall, it can steer the incoming beam directly to the uh, user. So here we want to go over uh, basic link layer design, how we establish the beam. So let's assume that base station and user wants to communicate each other. Then base station will search for user first. 
So it will sweep its transit beam. But due to blockage, user cannot detect the base station. So what it would do is it would turn the MMO on and tell MMO to start sweeping its beam. So MMO would sweep its beam, and at the same time, user would also search for the uh, beam from the MMO. And at the end, user will find the combination of base station, MMO, and user angle that maximizes the SNR. And because the search happens three times, it's complex, it takes n cube, but we want to emphasize that it only happens once per installation because the location of base station and MMO is fixed. And once the user is moving, now the alignment happens only between MMO and user, so the search becomes n squared. And assume that downlink is already aligned. Now, instead of receiving the beam, user wants to transmit its own data to the base station. Then what user can do is it can align its transmit beam in the direction of receiving beam, and the base station can align its transmit beam to the direction of the receiving beam. And the key here is that without reconfiguring MM wall, uplink is automatically established. And this is due to a unique property of our surface that achieves um, angular reciprocity. So this allows a fast downlink and uplink conversion. And again, uh, MMO can split the beam and accelerate the beam search by order of magnitude, but for detail due to the time constraint, we refer to our paper. So this is a high-level design overview where MMO is installed in front of the window, and the control unit is uh, connected to MMO to supply the proper voltage for steering angle. So if we zoom into the MMO, MMO consists of multiple ribs, with each rib consisting a magnetic metal arm in the front side and electric metal arm on the back side, which is responsible for electric uh, field or magnetic field. And each metal arm has electric component loaded onto it, and once we apply a voltage on the uh, electric component, it changes the magnitude and phase of the incoming field. And this is a summary of what's happening with the magnetic to magnitude and phase. So here, UM is voltage applied to the magnetic metal atom, and U is voltage applied to electric metal atom from 0 to 8 volts. And we want to define the magnitude and phase and follow. So as wave propagates in the direction of red arrow across the MM wall, uh, we measure the amplitude of transmitted wave S2 relative to the amplitude of the incoming S1. So if magnitude is one, that indicates there's no loss. And we measure the phase shift as how much phase has been shifted uh, for the transmitted wave relative to the incoming wave. So let's try to apply zero volt on both electric metal atom and magnetic metal atom. Then we can map a point as follow. So now the magnitude is almost at one, which means that loss is very low, and we get a phase of roughly zero. And for subsequent rib, let's say we apply four volt, then we get a high magnitude again with uh, some different phase values. So let's dive into a bit more deeper. So how does it work? So here we are visualizing the magnitude and phase response across different frequencies. And we have magnetic metal atom in the front, electric metal atom in the back. So let's say we apply zero volt again. And because we apply same voltage to both uh, metal atoms, it would resonate at the same uh, resonant frequency, which is around 23 gigahertz. And at phase, there will be a sharp phi to two phi uh, change. But our frequency of interest is at 24 gigahertz millimeter wave frequency. So if we visualize in 2D, we get a high magnitude at uh, zero volt, zero volt, and uh, phase as shown above. And let's now try to increase the voltage on the electric metal atom. Then what happens is that there will be a frequency shifting of the electric response. And now if we look at our point of interest, which is 24 gigahertz, we get some low magnitude with some slightly different phase. And we would repeat this procedure, and we can construct a heat map like this. And what's really interesting is that if we apply a same voltage on both electric and magnetic metal atom, the overlap resonance will be shifted together. So if we apply 8 volt, it will shift it together. So our magnitude uh, is ranging from 0 0.6 to 1, where we can arbitrarily have uh, any phase from negative phi to um, uh, phi, which means that in order to steer the angle, we need to apply a least of phase shift across different ribs. And this means if we can achieve high magnitude in any phase by just adjusting voltage, we can steer the incoming beam to any direction. 
So this is a summary of um, the heat map that I just showed. On the left, this is showing the transmission where we use the diagonal side for high magnitude and any phase. And on, on reflection, this is complementary. So what we do is that once we get this pattern, we pre-compute all the list of voltage level needed for every steering angle, and we construct a lookup table and use this uh, table for real-time deployment. And in the paper, we have formulated uh, in-depth theoretical analysis on our meta atom, and we have found that adjusting parameters like radius, gap, and width um, helps uh, scaling our surface to millimeter wave. And among those parameters, miniaturizing radius was a key to scaling up to millimeter wave. And you can see by adjusting these parameters, we can go even higher to 60 gigahertz. But our frequency of interest was in 24 gigahertz. And what we noticed was that since the meta atom at that scale is very small, the manufacturing tolerance does shift the operating frequency a bit. But by adjusting voltages, we can compensate this tolerance. And one of the biggest challenges in designing surface at millimeter wave scale is that because meta atom is very small, they are vulnerable to coupling with control lines. So our goal was to block millimeter wave signal from interacting with control lines. And traditionally, there are methods um, that people have proposed, and thinner and longer the couple lines of the control network becomes, it provides high impedance to block the millimeter wave signal. But at millimeter wave scale, it's very hard to fabricate such line with common PCB techniques. And another method is just to use uh, commodity coil inductors, but this adds a lot of cost and loss. And third way is to introduce high impedance using radial stop, but this requires a 3D structure of the design, which is very hard to fabricate. So we needed some biasing network that is easy to fabricate, minimize the use of extra components, and avoid large copper on the same panel. And we have proposed a meander structure that achieves all three goals. And for details, we will refer to the paper. So this is some evolution of, of our prototyping. We first made our prototype in March 2021. And finally, the working prototype, um, we made it in December 21, which I brought it here as well. And we were trying to scale the prototype um, up to 10 by 20 centimeter, but there has been to be six months component shortage due to COVID. So eventually we made our prototype, final prototype in July, 2022. So this is a detail of our hardware with a uh, control unit known as DAC. And we have shown the PCB ribs and details of magnetic metatom, electric metatom and shown above. And we have implemented our device in multiple scenarios. So first, we needed to do the near field testing to obtain this lookup table. And then based on this lookup table we obtained from near field testing, we use it in real time for outdoor to indoor uh, scenarios and indoor to indoor reflective scenarios. So let me first explain the indoor to indoor reflection performance. Here is my pass lab with window and two brick walls in between the windows. So we have positioned the transmitter in the corner of the room and moved the receiver locations in various uh, locations across the office. And we have installed the MMO in the center of the window. And actually, even without MMO, many of the places were having a high SNR because of rich scattering environment. And for those locations, MMO was able to increase the SNR by up to 5 dB. But there were locations, for example, like corners, that was suffering from lack of reflection paths. And MMO was able to boost the SNR for those areas by up to 15 dB, and guaranteeing more than 90% of the location outage-free under 128 QAM. And what we noticed was that once we installed another MMO on the right side of the window, we were seeing that not much gain was uh, achieved with the second MMO. And this indicates that single MMO was enough to cover the whole room. And one may argue that what about just having a simple reflective metal sheet that provides alternative path? So we have installed a 60 centimeter by 60 centimeter metal sheet, the same location at MMO, and see how much performance improves. And actually, most of the time, more than 90% of the time, the performance actually degrades. And only uh, about 15%, 15 to 10% was getting an improvement, which shows that the single um, fixed angle reflection doesn't really help in the practical uh, scenarios. 
And last, let's now talk about our to outdoor to indoor experiment. And we have positioned the transmitter outside the office, more than about seven meters away from MMO. And in many locations, uh, the receiver established a link with transmitter through the window and got a high SNR for more than 20 dB. But there were areas where brick wall was actually blocking the signal path and a lot of receivers were suffering from a complete signal outage. For those areas, MMO boosted the SNR by up to 30 dB and allowed uh, outage-free communication for more than 90% of the locations. So in conclusion, MMO is a first work that is able to steer, split the beam, and uh, frequency shift a millimeter wave signal for most 360 degrees that is applicable for outdoor to indoor, indoor to indoor, and outdoor to outdoor settings. And we have overcame some fundamental challenges in millimeter wave RF design and control. And I have attached some demos in the QR code, so if anyone's interested, they can scan it and take a look. And this is the end of my talk, and I'm happy to answer any questions.